At the end of every unit, your teacher has the chance to teach a lesson by others in context to enhance. But what do you suppose a teacher has us do? He skips the lesson and makes us make a digital LEQ. LEQ should need historical evidence, reasoning that can cooperate in advance. A complex thesis Dr. Irish would admire. And then we drop the screencast like a single that is fire. Student created screencast for you to like, subscribe, and share. We know you've had all the green and Heimler that you can bear. If we have the most views by 10 p.m. on the fifth day, we earn 500 bonus points, which guarantees an A. Without much more fanfare or ado, we present to you our digital LEQ. How Political Ideologies Challenge the Existing Social and Political Order by Jordan, Nina, Tylea, and Enrique. Big ideas. Please keep these questions in mind throughout the presentation. You should be able to answer them at the end. Question one, what methods were used in fascism to gain followers? Question two, what were the main goals of communism? And question three, how do fascism and communism parallel one another? Thesis. Some may argue that political ideologies such as communism and fascism do little to ch challenge a country's social political order. However, both philosophies challenge the existing political and social order through appealing to the masses and redrawing social structures. Therefore, communism and fascism made a significant impact that can still be observed to this day. Contextualization. Communism. It is defined as the removal of social classes, particularly economic statuses. It challenges nationalism and capitalism, and it, is a, it was a reason behind World War II. Fascism. It is defined as a dictatorial power, oppression of opposition, and regimented society. It challenges socialism, and it is believed to be the superior race, religion, and distinctive social classes. Communism and fascism were viewed as opposites inverse to the ideas of one another. There was a desperation within the governments and the people to restore a sense of order and organization. Absolution, both communism and fascism sought absolute control and commitment towards each ideology. Nationalism was the pre-existing ideology in China while socialism was the pre-existing ideology in Italy. Main points. Appealing to the masses and redrawing social structure. Appealing to the masses. Through various propaganda posters, rallies, newspapers, etc., both communism and fascism prospered in winning over the majority of people in a country. The spread of each involves similar practices, but how they presented their ideas successfully varied. Communism sought to accommodate everyone by deeming the people's rights as guaranteed and inalienable, with no exception. A working class being a majority in a country would favor ideas that guarantee them rights. The fascist Nazi party would win over much of Germany since they appeared as organized and could bring back order to Germany since the country was in shambles after World War I. Our first primary source is a quote by Bonito Mussolini. Socialism is a fraud, a comedy, a phantom, a blackmail. Historical situation. Mussolini became the fascist dictator of Italy. At the time of this quote, he was leading a charge against the socialists. Reasoning and analysis. One way to appeal toward the public eye involved downplaying other ideologies, in this case, socialism. A fascist leader like Mussolini opposed socialism through negative commentary, in turn, holding up the fascist ideas higher. Point of view. This quote is meant to showcase Mussolini's negative view on socialism by attempting to deplatform and delegitimize it describing socialism as a fraud, a comedy, a phantom, and a blackmail demonstrates Mussolini's dedication to fascism by knocking down socialism. Our second primary source is a picture taken on the 23rd of September in 1969. Historical situation. At the time of this picture, Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev was in Iowa. Within the crowd, hoping to see Khrushchev, stood a man holding a sign that reads, the only good communist is a dead one. Reasoning and analysis. 
The effects of World War II were fairly prevalent. Even with politicians making an effort to mend bonds, citizens did not let up. This is a clear representation of the strained relationship between the US and the Soviet Union post World War II and during the Cold War. Point of view, the blatant display of hatred and disrespect emphasizes the level of hostility that was produced by widespread propaganda between communism and capitalism. Our third primary source is a fascist propaganda journal, Historical Situation. This is a picture of an annual agenda produced by the fascist party riddled with fascist propaganda. It was targeted toward farmers and merchants to provide lots of information on agricultural products and machinery, while also giving advice for successful farming. Reasoning and analysis. This agenda was used to integrate fascist views and values into working citizens in order to aid in the conversion. This is a clear example of how difficult it was to avoid propaganda in a way it was subtly utilized by political parties to gain followers. Point of view, the casual nature used to spread propaganda shows how heavily integral it was for fascism success. Redrawing social structure. Communism and fascism also challenged the pre-existing political and or social orders by redrawing the social structures. Communism sought to remove all sort of social class and any sort of economic statuses. It challenged the already existing social orders which had a set social structure by attempting to remove them from the structure completely. Fascism had a strict social structure that favored the middle class. This challenged the existing social order by striving for a society with a solid social structure that tried to benefit the middle class rather than what was already in place. Our first secondary source is a statue of Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels, who were the first creators of communism located in Berlin. Historical situation. This picture illustrates a statue of Marx, who is to the left, and Engels, who is to the right, who are considered to be the founders of communism, creating the most prominent ideology of the communist movement. Reasoning and analysis. This statue represents the communist ideology established by Marx and Engels. One part of that ideology is the intention of having no set social class or order, so everyone can enjoy the benefits of labor and the state could fade away. Point of view. This picture is meant to offer the public a look at the statue of the two main founders of communism, presenting a glimpse into history and the ideologies they stand for. Our second secondary source is a portrait of Benito Mussolini painted by Ernest Hamlin Baker. Historical situation. This is a picture of a portrait of Benito Mussolini who came up with the term fascism and is most associated with the ideology. Reasoning and analysis. This portrait represents the fascist ide ideology that was coined and expanded upon by Mussolini. Within the social aspect of the ideology, it is explicitly stated that social classes are needed to protect the state and to avoid chaos. This social structure also attempted to favor the middle class. Point of view. This picture is meant to show Mussolini, who is connected to the fascist ideology, representing a view into the past and the ideology he stood for. Theme analysis. Theme two, cultural developments and interactions. Theme three, governance, and theme five, social interactions and organization are all present in this presentation. Please pause the video to review and answer the big ideas. The next slide will contain answers to these questions. The following are possible answers to the big ideas. Here are additional sources used in this presentation. 